Lately in class, we've been talking a lot about bases. In R3, the simplest basis to work with consists of the standard unit basis, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. The reason that it's so easy to work with this basis is that if we have some other vector, like minus 1, 1, negative 5, the weights are obvious from just looking at the vector. We could write V as minus E1 plus E2 minus 5 E3. So the standard unit basis uh, is the easiest to work with. But of course, there are lots of other bases. Here, for example, is another basis, 2, 3, 0, 4, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4, 5. How do I know that this is a basis for R3? Well, I can create a matrix by putting all three of these vectors in its columns, and I can row reduce and show that I get the identity matrix. And therefore, by the invertible matrix theorem, these three vectors have to form a basis. Now, in many other situations, or I should, before we go on, should state that if we have a vector like B from the previous page, and if we want to write it as a linear combination of V1, V2, V3, we're trying to find the weights X1, X2, and X3 so that B is a linear combination like this. If we construct a matrix whose columns are V1, V2, V3, and a column vector whose values are x1, x2, x3, this is nothing more than the matrix A times x. So in order to find the weights, we have to solve the system of equations AX equals B, and in general, for example, using the vectors on the previous page, to find the weights, we actually have to create an augmented matrix, A augmented B, row reduce it to find out what those weights are. So the standard basis is a really nice basis. The basis on the previous page isn't as nice because finding weights involves elementary row reductions. So what we're looking for is we're looking for something that's kind of in between, something that has, it's easy to compute the weights, but maybe it won't be as easy as using the standard basis vectors. Now, an important property that the standard basis vectors have is that they are all uh, orthogonal to one another. So a set of vectors in n space is orthogonal provided any pair of vectors in the set are orthogonal to one another. For example, here's a set of three vectors in three space, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. This is an orthogonal set of vectors because each pair of vectors here is orthogonal to one another. If the set is an orthogonal set and it's also a basis, we call it and orthogonal basis for R3. So let's take a look at this set consisting of 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 1. This is an orthogonal basis. First, let's check to make sure that the vectors are orthogonal. If I look at the dot product of V1 with V2, I get 1 times 1 plus 1 times negative 2 plus negative 1 times negative 1. I'm just using the values of these vectors, and I get 0. So v1 and v2 are orthogonal to one another. And it's easy to show that v1 and v3 are orthogonal, as are v2 and v3. Now, if we form a matrix using v1, v2, v3 as the columns, and we row reduce it, we get the identity. So we see that v1, v2, v3 also form a basis for R3 by the invertible matrix theorem. So they form a basis for R3, and they are pairwise orthogonal, so they are an orthogonal basis. Now, if we have another vector, B, let's say we want to write it as a linear combination of vectors that form an orthogonal basis. Now, the orthogonal basis vectors aren't as nice as the standard basis in Rn, but they're going to be somewhat nicer. Uh, the basis is somewhat nicer than the example I showed you before in that the vectors v1 up through vn are orthogonal to one another. Okay, so we're not going to have to use an augmented matrix to find the weights. So what we're going to do is to find the weights, if we have a situation x1, x2, we, x1, v1, plus x2, v2, so on and so forth, to find the weights x1 and x2, we're going to do a clever trick of taking the dot product of each side with the vectors v1, v2, 
up through Vn separately. Let's take a look at an example. So let's take the equation above, b equals x1, v1, x2, so on and so forth. And again, we're trying to figure out the weights, x1, x2. Let's take this equation, that equation, and take the dot product of each side with v1. So if I expand the right-hand side, I can use the fact that the dot product is distributive together with the fact that the dot product is bilinear. So x1, v1, dotted with v1 would simply be x1 times v1 dotted with itself. x2, v2 dot v1 would be the second term, and so on and so forth. And finally, if I take xn, vn, and dot it with v1, I get xn, vn, dotted with v1. But the vectors in this basis have the special property that they are parewell, pairwise orthogonal to one another. So this dot product is zero. This dot product is zero, as are all the dot products between. That means that the only thing that's going to be left is x1, v1, dotted with itself. So if we solve this equation, x1, v1, dotted with itself, equals bv1, if we solve it for x1, we get x1 equals b dotted with v1 over the length of v1 squared. Now, this makes sense because the numerator is a dot product, it's a scalar. The denominator is also a scalar, so x1 will work out to be a scalar. So let's take a look and figure out what x1 is. x1 is b dotted with v1 all over the length of v1 squared. So here's my b. I'm going to use minus 1, negative 5 again. Here's v1 from the previous page, 1, 1, negative 1. If I dot these two vectors, I get 5. If I take the length of the vector, 1, 1, negative 1, and square that length, I get 3. So that says that the weight would be 5 thirds. Similarly, x2 would be b dot v2 over the length of v2 squared. Here's b dotted with v2 divided by 1, negative 2, negative 1. That's the length of v1 squared. And if you calculate the dot product, you're going to get 2. This quantity in the denominator is going to be 6, so you get 2, 6, which is 1 third. So that's x2. And you do x3 similarly. To get x3, you take b dotted with v3 over the length of v3 squared and simplify the quantity, and you'd get 3. So that says that the vector b that we had above can be written as 5 thirds v1 plus 1 third times v2 plus 3 times v3. Now, the important thing to realize is that we calculated these weights simply using dot products, not using augmented matrices. And dot products are simpler to compute than augmented matrices. So, to summarize, if we have an orthogonal basis and we're trying to write b, a vector b, as a linear combination of them, we can determine the weights x1 through xn without using an augmented matrix. We simply calculate a bunch of dot products. And if our basis v1, v2, v3, three, three basis vectors, we have basically three dot products and three lengths to compute. Okay, so where is all this going? A common problem that we're going to encounter in our future discussions of linear regression is what we call the orthogonal projection problem. Suppose we have a subspace, W, of the vector space Rn. And such a, a subspace has to have the property that's closed under addition and scalar multiplication. The simplest case would be R3, which is what we've talked about in class. The possible subspaces consist of just the zero vector, a line through the origin, meaning we can express W as the span of a single vector. And the way we get the subspace is we simply stretch the vector uh, back and forth, so T times V, where T is a scalar.
If w is a plane through the origin, then we can express it as the span of two vectors, v1 and v2, where v1 and v2 are linearly independent non-zero vectors. And the plane is formed by looking at all possible linear combinations of the form tv1 plus sv2, where t and s are scalars. Okay, so let's take a look at the situation where w is a plane in the origin, having a basis given by v1, 1, 1, negative 2, and v2, 1, negative 2, negative 1. So I'm using two of the three vectors from the previous page. I'm leaving out v3. So the plane, which is in orange here, is formed by looking at all possible linear combinations of v2 and v1. Now let's suppose we bring along a third vector, like minus 1, negative 5. It does not belong to the plane, so I've drawn it in red right here. Now the orthogonal projection problem is the problem of finding another vector, y, which is in the plane, so that the length b minus y, the length b minus y, which is represented by the dashed segment here, its length, is as small as possible. So for example, if I drew y, if I drew my vector y over here, the length from y to b would be much larger than it is that I've drawn it in the picture. So one way to think about the orthogonal projection is to think about the sun being directly overhead, and the orthogonal projection is going to be the shadow cast by the sun on the vector b, and that's what we have right here. And then another vector I've drawn here is the perpendicular component, and so I'm just taking a look at the projection, and I'm drawing an orthogonal vector from the end of the projection up to b. So how do we find this orthogonal projection vector? Well, we know that the vectors v1 and v2, they span the plane. And if I throw in a third vector, negative 1, 0, negative 1, those three vectors form an orthogonal basis for R3. We actually did that on the previous page. And we know that we can write B then as a linear combination of v1, v2, v3, where the weights are determined using the technique on the, on the previous page. So for example, on the previous page, the weight we multiplied v1 by was just b dot v1 over the length of v1 squared. This is the weight we multiply v2 by, and this is the weight right here that we multiply v3 by. So we have a scalar times v1, a scalar times v2, a scalar times v3, and the scalars, the weights, are determined just by computing dot products. Now, the sum of the first two terms, this is a constant times v1, a constant times v2, so this is a linear combination of v1 and v2, so this linear combination has to belong to the plane. So therefore, this linear combination is the orthogonal projection. And this third vector has to be the vector that I add to the orthogonal projection to get the vector b. So this part is the orthogonal projection. This part is the vector y perp that I've drawn right here. So let's take a look at an example. OK, so what I'm going to do to get the projection of b onto w, I'm going to look at the first two terms in the previous page, b dot v1 divided by the length of v1 squared times v1, plus b dot v2, divided by the length of v2 squared times v2. Now, I computed that this quantity a few minutes ago. It was 5 thirds. Multiply that by v1. 1 third. Multiply that by v2. So 5 thirds of v1 plus 1 third of v2 is the vector 2, 1, negative 2. So this is the projection of b onto w. So again, if w has a basis given by v1 and v2, as in the case of the plane a moment ago, the orthogonal projection is determined using several dot products. Now the perpendicular component, which I showed you on the previous page, it could be computed by taking the dot product of b with v3 divided by the length of v3 squared multiplied by v3. But a simpler simpler way to get it is to use the fact that if we add the projection to y perp, we get b. So that says that y perp would be b minus the orthogonal projection. 
So here's B minus the orthogonal projection. My vector B I had on the previous page, I just computed the orthogonal projection right here. And so if I subtract the two, I get minus three, zero, three. This has to be perpendicular to the plane, so it belongs with the plane, which is W, so it belongs to the orthogonal complement. So let's summarize this. Suppose W is a subspace of Rn having dimension k, and the subspace has basis vectors v1 up through vk, an orthogonal basis. If b is a vector in Rn, that we can write the vector b as the orthogonal projection plus another vector that's perpendicular to w. The projection of b onto w, we simply look at our basis, v1 up through vk, and we determine the weights using these dot products. And then the perpendicular component is just b minus that projection, and that belongs to the orthogonal, uh, orthogonal uh, complement of w. Okay, so let's take a look at an example in two-dimensional space. This is easy to view because in two-dimensional space, in R2, subspaces consist of either the origin or a line from the origin. So I'm going to look at the subspace that's spanned by the vector 3, 1. So here's the vector 3, 1. I'll call this V1. And then if I look at the span of that, I'm looking at the linear combination of V1, which is going to trace out this line. And let's let the vector be equal to 2, which is does not fall on this line. So the projection of B onto W would be, because there's only one vector in the basis for W, B dotted with V1 over the length of V1 squared times V1. Now this is a dot product. This is just multiplication because this quantity is a scalar. If we take B and if we dot it with V1, which is 3, 1, and divide it by the length of the vector 3, 1 squared, this whole quantity right here reduces to be 8 tenths. And I multiply that by the vector 3, 1, so I get the vector 12 fifths, 4 fifths. And so let's see if that makes sense. That would be the blue vector here, which points in both the positive and xy directions, which is what we see here. Now, the orthogonal complement, y perp, would be b minus that vector, the projection vector, and we get minus 2 fifths, 6 fifths. Notice how it points in the negative x direction and the positive y direction, and that makes sense if we look at this vector. It points in the positive y, but the negative x direction. So we're going to see in the next class period another way of determining this orthogonal projection using what's known as a projection matrix. That's coming up. But what I would like for you to do in preparation for class is to look at the following situation in R4. So W is going to be the span of the vectors 1, 2, 0, 3, 3, negative 4, 1, 1. B is going to be the vector 5, negative 2, negative 3, 1. The vector B cannot be written as a linear combination of these two vectors. I would like for you to calculate the projection of B onto W. So that's going to involve calculating a few dot products and lengths, and then y perp, which is the vector b minus the result that you obtain right here. I'll see you then.